Hi, my name is Grace Wallace and I graduated from Wofford in May of 2013 and I was a humanities major with focuses in philosophy, religion, and English and I also had a business minor. I'm the CEO and founder of Rightfully His and Rightfully His is a stationery company stateside with the majority of the proceeds going back to purchasing paper and pencils for different schools in Africa. And all those paper and pencils are purchased locally um, to generate revenue within their local village markets and make it more sustainable for their local community. And as of right now, we are so happy to say that we support three schools in Uganda, two in Kenya, one in Tanzania, and one in Rwanda. I started Rightfully His when I studied abroad in Aix-en-Provence in the south of France, which was my spring semester of junior year, um, 2012. And I, my sister had flown in and she was spending the week with me and we had just gotten back from a weekend trip to Paris. And I asked her to meet me after um, class at my favorite local coffee shop. And I was, at that point I had been reading different nonprofit books. And two of those were Kisses by Katie, Kisses from Katie by Katie Davis, and Start Something That Matters by Blake McCloskey. And between those two and all the me time I had, because I do not speak French, I was able to come up with the logistics and backbone behind Rightfully His. And as I sat down with my sister and told her everything I wanted to do and what the logistics looked like, I we had a sheet of paper between us and we were writing and writing and just really trying to think of that perfect name that would solidify the company. And that's when Rightfully His came to fruition and when it was born in the south of France. So some of the challenges that I had when starting a business in school was the first one being time. It was really tough, mostly your, my senior year where there's already a lot of activity and excitement um, to start something so new that would take so much time and then still balance my schoolwork. And I had a really, really tough time of when I was working on schoolwork, you know, I was feeling guilty about not putting time with Rightfully His. And when I was working on Rightfully His, not spending time studying or doing schoolwork. And so that was really tough of trying to find that balance and what that looked like. And eventually it worked its way out. I really set time of when I was going to work on Rightfully Hit and I worked on it without feeling guilt of wanting to do something else or needing to do something else. And so that really helped me. And the second challenge I really had was actually being courageous enough to launch Rightfully His September first week of school and it's the last thing anyone thinks that you're going to do. And so I was sitting in Panera and I wasn't even thinking about launching it um, because I had been with Rightfully His, just me, from March to September and it had become so near and dear to my heart, figuring out the logistics, working on the website, um, being in contact with my um, contact in Uganda, our very first school, and supporting the children of Bafula. And that was really tough because once you put an idea out there, it comes, it allows people to put place judgment on it and it makes it very vulnerable and make, put me in a very vulnerable state. And so that was really tough and a challenge for me of when to, when to launch it. And after I did, I just felt an overflow of support. And um, every time I talk to someone who is thinking about launching something or, you know, are nervous about it, I just encourage them to do it because the only thing I felt was support. And yes, it put me in a vulnerable state, but it put me in a state where people could come in and help and help promote Rightfully His, help the, by purchasing stationery. Um, so I really haven't felt a time where I've felt like I failed, but something that I've really um, had to struggle with and it was a hard decision is my second semester of senior year choosing um, to go full-time with the company or not, or to actively pursue looking for a full-time job. And that was really tough. I mean, I knew that I had always wanted to um, leave Spartanburg and go and find a great job either in a big city or something like that and that was tough realizing that you know if I decide to go full-time with Rightfully His it's not 
something that can fully support me. And so I'd have to move back home. And that was a decision that I made with the help, with a lot of prayer, but also with the help of my mentors. And I wrote down the mentors that have just been on this journey with me and discussed it with them of what I need to do. And again, all I felt was support and the encouragement to pursue it because I knew that I had an army behind me that would not let me fail if I needed something. It was in March and I was again making that decision of should I go full time, should I not, and I'll never forget I was sitting in the library and I was studying for an exam and I got a phone call from Mike Brown which is now he's on my advisory board but he's a, a great mentor and someone that I have um, looked up to with his business and how he's grown it and he called me and within a few minutes of conversation he had um, placed a 6,000 note card order to rightfully his and I knew at that point that there is no way I could not go full time with this. I mean it was a total sign that this is what I needed to do and orders will come and with with just his order, we were, we were able to pick up new schools, which is the whole reason the company was built. So this next short-term year of Rightfully His, we really want to make Spartanburg um, make Rightfully His their own. And the reason I say this in September, right before I launched, I journaled an entry, which I just read a few days ago, that said, I wanted rightfully his to mean something to someone else beside me, besides me in the Wofford community. And I really feel like that was accomplished through the community at Wofford, also the Space to Launch, which is um, the entrepreneurial group that I was a part of. And so that, that happened, and I really feel that that was succeeded 100%. So now this next step of just really, since really being full-time with Rightfully is for one month since I just got back from Africa, being able to make Spartanburg it's their own and make, get them to accept Rightfully His and take ownership of the company. So I think that starting a business is a great idea um, in college and being at Wofford and the reason I say that is because I met a, a mentor out in the Aspen who I pitched rightfully his to in its early stages. And the number one thing I remember from that conversation was he said, Grace, you have to launch in college because that's your support system, that's your backbone. And when you have that backbone and you know that people are behind you and you have that army behind you supporting you, there's there's no way it's going to fail. And in that way, you're going out into the real, real world and you have that army. And so I think it's a wonderful place to launch your company because not only do you have the community, but you also have your fellow peers and classmates supporting you and rooting for you. They want you to succeed as well. And letting them be a part of it and you know them taking ownership of it makes it so much easier to run a business because you feel that support and that support is what's going to get you through the hard days when you feel like you don't have any you do and it's it starts with your um, college and your community there um, so i have felt a wealth of support and that support first starts with my family and most specifically my mom and my sister and my sister, because she was there, she was the one that was there at the table at my favorite French cafe when Rightfully His came into fruition. And from there, she has just been a total support in anything and everything she can do. Um, and then my mom, she, we like to call her uh, the twine tire because she has helped me hold a lot of strings to tie and just really anything I need, anything the company ever needs, she is there and that's been such a huge support because having that one person that when you get good news that's the first person you call that's been wonderful also i will have to say my boyfriend and he because he's a financial analyst he has become the cfo and seeing as business is might be my minor but it's definitely not my strong suit um, having him really help with my financials has been a total blessing 
Um, some more of my mentors are really my advisory board, which um, are part of the community, such as Bill Barnett, but also people at The Space and at Wofford, Scott Cochran. Um, really, the, all of The Space has been such a support system because they really have just rallied behind me, and anything I need, they are there, which is a true blessing and part of that support system in college and a reason why you should launch a company. Um, but also people just in the Wofford community and professors and Mike Brown, who was the one who did the first bulk order. Um, he was the one who really made that transition into, this is just something you know I'm doing because I want to support children, whereas this is a company and this is, we've just sold 6,000 note cards with rightfully his on the back, which will be sent out. And so he was has been a huge mentor for us and also being, um, connected to Wofford, it's allowed me to be here at the Iron Yard, which has been another great support system because it's another platform I can stand and say, you know, rightfully his is co-working at the Iron Yard and this is, it gives you credibility. Um, and finally, my last mentor has really been my uncle and he is the friend of the company that sent me to Africa just about a month ago and he wanted to make an investment into the company and he felt the best way to do that would be to send me and for me to gain my credibility and see the children there. So he sent myself, my mother, my sister and also our videographer um, who has really just brought back tons of footage of Africa and the children that we serve and also photographs of those children and with the stationery and it's been such a wonderful thing so to close out my mentor list he has just really been there and anything I ever need he is there and he not only did that through sending me but just through his willingness to help wherever there is a problem. A typical day for Rightfully His is we, I'm an early bird, so we come in early and I start checking my emails, just any emails I missed at the end of the day I couldn't answer, um, but also any that came in that morning. And in the afternoon, it really just depends. It depends on if we need, any, need to fulfill any orders. So if we fulfill orders, then we run to the printers and we're checking proofs and um, or I have to run home, the best place for me to fulfill orders that come in is to do it out of my home office. And so I'll go home for the afternoon and really fulfill orders there just because it can happen in a lot quicker manner than bringing everything to the iron yard. Um, and if we don't have any orders to fulfill at that time, and then it really is just the printers. We run to the post office almost every day, which is a joy. I've gotten to know them so well. and. Um, also doing proof like creating proofs for different customers to make sure it's how their stationery wants um, keeping in contact with my point point people and that's that's grown since we did pick up more schools so I have more point people to be in contact with which is a total blessing and we love those are our favorite phone calls because we get to hear about what is happening there what um, is going on in their lives and we really enjoy doing that um, and so really that's, I mean, it's really just on a day-to-day -day. and if you're an entrepreneur you understand things come up. We don't really have a set schedule. I try in the morning to have one, but in the afternoons it's meetings, it's what needs to get done, it's just you got to hustle to get everything complete <laughs> and so that's a good thing and um, you know I was so worried of you know I just am not sure that I can fill rightfully his from nine to five because I was working part-time on it and realizing I always had more to do but still didn't know if I had that much to do and I just proved myself wrong because we work on it a lot longer than nine to five which it's fun and you know being an entrepreneur you get to really you get to pick your schedule, but you get to work on something that you absolutely love doing every day. So it's so cliche, but it really doesn't feel like work. I mean, we enjoy doing what we do, and that's why I decided to go full time with it. The advice I would give, I've really already stated, but I just want to recap it. Um, one of those things is have a great support system behind you and mentors that you feel comfortable enough to call, meet with coffee on a spur of moment, 
um, if you need to make a decision. And having people like that there, they're gonna, they know your vision and they know the vision of your company. And so they might not give you the answer, but they'll help you talk through um, figuring out the answer yourself, which is a blessing. So really, I would find a set of three to five mentors that you feel comfortable on any day to call at any time to really get help with answers or any questions you have about the company. And make those a wide array. You know, have one of my mentors is an entrepreneur, so having his expertise is great. But also on my advisory board, um, which I consider some, this person a mentor, um, it's a woman and she understands the importance of the arts. And so having that and realizing what questions to go to which mentor, um, that'll be huge. Um, second of all is if you are wanting to launch a business, launch it. There's no reason for you not to. This is your prime time right now and you know we're at an age that people might look down on us because we're younger, but this is the time to do it. I mean, I was, I'll never forget I was sitting when I was trying to really make my decision and I went to go talk to some of my mentors. I was sitting in Scott Cochran's office and he said, Grace, I always wanted to start a business right out of school, but I didn't. And I think you need to do this. I know that you need to do this. It will be successful if you put all, you know, all your all your eggs in the basket. And so that was such a blessing to hear because you have that encouragement. And since then, Scott has only been encouraging and just been wonderful. And we joked around last time I said, I went to his office last week and I was sitting in his office and he said, remember that time when you sat here asking if you should go full time with Rightfully His? And it really has just become full circle. And so having those people to encourage you, but go ahead and launch it. Like, you can do it, I have no doubt. And yeah, it's gonna be hard and it's gonna be stressful and overwhelming and you will feel every emotion, but just know that you have a support system. And I keep saying that because, maybe because I depend on mine so much, but I think that's the reason why Rightfully has, is so successful because we have so many people that have taken ownership of the company. Um, and a lot of people say, you know, never give up, but just to be practical, you know, don't not give up, but just be very practical about your company. And, you know, it's really helped me to set projections of what I want the company to be within a certain time period. So we have projections for six months, we have projections for a year, and we have those going up all the way to three years. And if I feel like I'm not meeting those goals or those projections that I set, then I need to reevaluate. And if that means that I need to reevaluate and take rightfully as another way, then I need to do that. And so, yes, don't ever give up on a dream that you have, but be very practical with your dream and with that set goals for yourself because you're going to be your judge. There's no one else holding you accountable for what you're doing. And so have those goals. If you're meeting them and if you're meeting them early, then push yourself harder. You know, if you're not, then reevaluate and you'll definitely have a successful business if you're keeping yourself accountable as well as your company accountable.